Hello folks, uh, how is everybody doing over there? Uh, in India, in Indonesia, or uh, Nepal, or uh, in Mexico. Uh, I hope uh, all of you are well and healthy in the midst of the uh, coronavirus attack. Uh, hopefully we can see each other pretty soon offline in here in Korea, but in the meantime, uh, we will uh, continue uh, to uh, discuss Project and Crystallogy online. And this week, uh, the third week of the whole semester, we will discuss the description of Adam in Jewish uh, literature. As you know, uh, Paul was a part of, uh, Paul belonged to the uh, Second Temple uh, Judaism. Second Temple Judaism. So Paul was not uh, somebody who invented the whole Adam Christology out of nothing, but uh, he obviously inherited uh, Adam uh, Adamic understanding uh, from his Jewish tradition. So this uh, this week uh, we will discuss, you know, what uh, was the uh, Jewish interpretation of Adam, uh, which was a foundation for uh, Paul. So uh, this week's uh, lecture, uh, today's lecture, uh, let's begin with uh, Genesis uh, one, two, three. As you already know, uh, I hope. I believe uh, you all know that the story of Adam uh, is found in Genesis chapter 1 through 3. Genesis 1 through 3, there God creates uh, uh, the whole universe in six days. And obviously, on the sixth day, God creates Adam, uh, a human being, the first human being. And uh, Adam is appointed by God to be a king of the whole uh, created world. Uh, when God uh, look at uh, when God look at Adam and the created world, what did He say? Uh, he said, "It's really good. It's really good." So, uh, the first creation was really good uh, in God's eyes. Uh, however, something happened, right? Something happens in human history. Uh, that is, uh, God gave Adam a commandment: uh, "Do not eat of the tree of good and evil." Uh, and Satan obviously enticed Adam to eat it. And Adam looked at the tree, and then he found that the uh, fruit is really uh, the, the fruit looks tasty, and as if it can uh, make him uh, uh, like a god. So Adam felt a strong uh, desire to become like a god, and he obviously ate the fruit. And the result was, yeah, the fall. The fall. Adam got. Uh, sick and dead, and he got cursed by God, and the whole world, along with Adam, uh, was cursed. So, the whole situation became completely bad. The first creation, God declared, that, oh, it's really good, but now, after the uh, fall of Adam, it's really bad. It's really bad. So, uh, two things. Two things. Uh, first of all, uh, Jews in Second Temple period, the people Paul and Jesus, uh, they are not really interested in explaining uh, Adam in detail in terms of his uh, life and uh, oh, you know uh, what happened to him and Eve. But uh, the Jews were more interested in relating uh, Adam's story to their own current situation. In other words, you know, Jews in the Second Temple period, uh, they wanted to, uh, they were experiencing what. The Jews in the Second Temple period, before uh, Paul and uh, Jesus, they were experiencing uh, oppression from the foreigners. Oppression from the foreigners. Uh, obviously, uh, Assyrians attacked, uh, Babylonians attacked them, and then uh, their nation lost their identity, and then uh, Persians ruled uh, Israel, then Greeks, and then Romans. So for about uh, six or seven hundred years, Israel has been under the power of the uh, uh, foreign rulership. So, uh, God, uh, 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 God gave them the land of Canaan, the promised land, and God said that, you know, I'll be your king. However, obviously, uh, for the Jews in Second Temple period, God was not their king, but uh, the foreign Gentile rulers. They were the kings, of, uh, they were the kings who uh, have ruled uh, Israel. And at the same time, Israel lost their independence. So, uh, uh, Israel, the Jews wanted to explain or understand uh, how to explain their current uh, tragic uh, situation. They found the answer in the story of Adam. 
so first of all, first of all, uh, so, uh, okay, so number one, uh, the Jews believe that uh, Adam, 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 due to his fall, uh, inherited uh, the tragic, the tragedy to his descendants. In other words, you know, everybody in Adam uh, is experiencing uh, suffering and death and curse uh, as a result of the fall of uh, uh, Adam. And at the same time, number two, what if, what if uh, God restores a human situation from uh, the state of the fall uh, to the state before the fall, before the fall? Because, you know, before the fall of Adam, God declared that everything is good. So, uh, uh, God will restore everything good uh, to the righteous. Then what will happen to us, the righteous ones, when God restores everything to uh, for us, you know, as if uh, it were like uh, uh, the state before the fall. Then our situation will be like uh, that before the fall. In other words, you know, uh, Adam before the fall becomes a model of the restored humanity, the righteous ones. Uh, and Adam after the fall, uh, that is our current situation. So Adam after the fall, that's our current situation. Adam before the fall, that's our uh, future restored uh, uh, state. Uh, all right, so number one, number one, so we will discuss three main topics today. And number one, Adam and Jewish anthropology. So Adam. Uh, number one, Adam and Jewish Anthropology. Adam and Jewish Anthropology. Anthropology, what is that? Anthropology is understanding or study of a human being. So, uh, how did Jews interpret human situation and human condition in light of Adam? So, that's our first uh, topic. That's our first topic. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, as you are experiencing, and uh, I am experiencing, we are currently going through a very uh, difficult time, uh, viruses, right? Coronaviruses, and uh, uh, loss of uh, jobs, and death of uh, humanity, and neighbors and friends, uh, they are uh, going through a suffering. So, uh, we all are uh, questioning, uh, what happened? Uh, what happened? Obviously, you know, something happened in China, and then, uh, you know, the virus, you know, spread around the whole world, including yours and mine. Uh, however, God is the creator of the universe, and when He created, what did He say? He said, everything is good. In other words, you know, there, were, uh, there, there was no uh, virus, there were not no viruses uh, in the beginning of the whole creation. So what happened? What caused this virus to exist? Uh, uh, Jews will say in Second Temple period, uh, it's because of Adam's fall, Adam's fall. Adam, Adam's, because of Adam's fall, uh, uh, we humanity uh, has to be under uh, suffering, all sorts of suffering. We were cursed, the whole land was cursed, creation was cursed. Uh, therefore, uh, some of our uh, 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 cells and uh, uh, our systems become uh, crooked, and then they turn out to be a viruses or a cancers and all sorts of things. In other words, you know, uh, uh, the Jews in the Second Temple period, uh, before Paul, they first of all uh, interpreted their current condition of uh, 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 tragedy, their tragic current condition or their unhappiness in light of Adam's story. Because Adam, our ancestor, sinned, because he fell, you know, uh, therefore, you know, we, his descendants, are experiencing uh, suffering. Uh, in 3 century BCE, 3 century BCE, uh, Jewish writer Ben Sira, Ben Sira, uh, Ben means son in Hebrew, so Ben Sira means a son of Sira. Uh, he's a 3 century BCE Jewish writer who was very, very authoritative. He was uh, obviously a legal teacher and everybody, every Jew respected him. His writings uh, became almost can canonical, and uh, people read his writing as if uh, it is, uh, as if they are uh, scriptures. So Ben Sira, in chapter 17 and 18, he was well aware of the story of Adam and Eve. Well, it's a 
found in Genesis 1 to 3, so how can you not uh, know the story of Adam and Eve? Another Jewish writing, uh, Jubilees. Jubilees? What's Jubilees? Jubilees means uh, 70. Uh, Jubilees means uh, uh, 70, right? 70. 70 years. Uh, Jews, in you know, every seventh year, they have a sabbatical year, and then uh, seven by seven, everything should be forgiven. So 49th year, and you know, everything should be forgiven. That's the Jubilee year. Uh, there is a Jewish writing called the uh, Jubilee, and Jubilee also claims that uh, the tragedy of uh, humanity, uh, the tragic situation that we humanity is experiencing, that is because of Adam's uh, 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 disobedience, Adam's failure. Uh, uh, God gave Adam uh, a commandment, right? Uh, do not eat from uh, the tree of uh, good and evil, but obviously Adam disobeyed. So that disobedient act, that disobedient act of Adam, that kind of you know, created a whole sort of uh, tragedy and uh, 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 tr uh, for whole humanity. And, and interestingly, there is a writing called Wisdom of Solomon. You know Solomon, right? The son of uh, David, and he uh, actually uh, erected, he built uh, the temple. So Wisdom of Solomon, there is a Jewish writing called Wisdom of Solomon. And uh, in that writing, Solomon says that uh, Adam uh, fell uh, because of disobedience, However, more importantly, uh, Adam fell because of uh, Satan's jealousy. Satan was jealous that uh, Adam was created by God's, uh, God's image, and Adam became the king of the whole universe. So Satan was jealous. So Satan enticed Adam to eat. So Solomon, wisdom of Solomon, uh, uh, explains the origin of Adam's fall in terms of the Satan's enticement. Uh, then, uh, uh, in Second Temple period, uh, what might be the most tragic experience among the Jews? What might be the most tragic? Obviously, for us, it is, you know, Corona uh, nineteen, the coronavirus. However, uh, for the Jews in Second Temple period, the most tragic experience might be the destruction of the temple and then exile, right? Assyrians destroyed the uh, northern kingdom of Israel, then Babylonians de uh, destroyed the southern kingdom of Israel. And then, you know, uh, they uh, uh, brought Israelites uh, into exile, their country. So Israelites obviously became the slaves there. They served uh, Babylonians and Assyrians. Now, uh, the Jews in the Second Temple period, they experienced their deportation into exile and then the de destruction of the second temple in terms of uh, Adam's uh, story. Uh, for example, for example, uh, oh, for example, uh, there is a story, there is a writing called uh, First Ezra. Force Ezra. Who is Ezra? Ezra, Ezra is a scribe in Second Temple period, but uh, this writing uh, it's a pseudonym. It's a pseudonym. Uh, somebody who was a, uh, who was late, uh, he claimed that he is the Ezra, uh, the Ezra in the Bible, and then uh, he claims that his writing was written by Ezra. So there were four books, and the fourth book. Uh, in that book, the writer Ezra uh, sees multiple visions, multiple visions, and in the first vision, he somehow sees Adam. The first Ezra, in his uh, first vision, sees Adam, and in that vision, uh, Adam disobeys God, and as a result, uh, God appointed death for Adam and his descendants. So, death, mo most importantly, death was the result of Adam's uh, uh, failure. And this is the destiny that uh, we, all humanity, all of uh, Adam's descendants, including us, uh, have to 
phase. In other words, this is a hereditary. Hereditary. It's in our blood, and at the same time, it is a cosmic. It's a cosmic. Nobody can escape uh, death. So first, Ezra explains death as the result of uh, Adam's uh, uh, fall. However, this is not the cause of Adam's fall. What might be the cause of Adam's fall? That is evil heart. Evil heart. Evil heart. Evil heart. Uh, so Ezra says that the evil heart came into existence through Adam's disobedience. Now, originally when Adam was created, Adam did not have this evil heart, but after the fall, this was created and it got uh, uh, descended to his descendants, including us. So inside of our heart, we do have this evil heart. And as a result, we keep sinning like our uh, father, uh, Adam. Uh, there's another, there's another uh, Jewish writing called Baruch. So Baruch, second Baruch. Baruch wrote many books, and this is the second book. Second Baruch, he's another scribe. He claims that Adam is the father of uh, we humanity, so he's the beginning and father of uh, 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 our humanity. Uh, and uh, second Baruch knows that uh, death, uh, came into existence through Adam's fall. However, if you remember the Genesis story, Adam did not die immediately. But uh, it took some time. Uh, obviously, Adam lived for about 500, uh, uh, 900, what, uh, 46 years? Something, it's pretty long, right? Do you want to live 946 years? No, I don't. But obviously, uh, around these years. However, according to Moses, it is 120. So ancient people thought that they can live up to 120. But, you know, this looks like, a, they look like a pretty long from our perspective. However, from the ancient's perspective, they are short. Originally, human beings were meant to live forever. So obviously their lifespan has been shortened from eternity to 900 or 120. Well, right now, Korea, 87 something, yeah. Something. Uh, again, Second Baruch considers that uh, because uh, uh, the cause of the cause of uh, uh, death was sin, sin, right? Uh, First Ezra claimed that it was because of evil heart in us, in Adam. But now, uh, because of that evil heart, we sin. So Baruch. Second Baruch considers this sin as a, not simply an ethical concept like a sinning, but uh, as a cosmic ruler, cosmic ruler. Sin rules us as our ruler. Therefore, we cannot avoid uh, keep sinning. Uh, again, uh, Second Baruch uh, uses uh, like a metaphor, metaphor, a metaphor. Uh, and in his metaphor, Second Baruch called sin a duck, a black water, black water. So when Adam sinned, uh, this sin became a cosmic rule of the whole universe, and as a black water, it covered the whole earth. Right? If you are in uh, Indonesia or Philippines, you have a lot of uh, uh, rain. What if the rain is black? that you will be covered by a black water. So black water, sin is called black water. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, Second Baruch also mentions evil heart, evil heart. Evil heart. So we all, we all do have evil heart inside, then what happens? We will keep sinning then we will become our own Adam. I'll be my own Adam, you will be your own Adam, you know, he or she will be uh, his Adam and her Adam. So there will be many Adams, many Adams. Like the first uh, Adam, when I become my Adam, you become your Adam, and everybody become uh, Adams. Therefore, we all follow Adam's path. Adam's path in sinning, 
disobeying and as a result, dying. Yeah. So uh, this is Jewish anthropology. Uh, so Jews in Second Temple period thought that what before the fall, Adam was created as a perfect human being. In other words, you know he was sinless, he was uh, uh, innocent. However, after Adam's fall, every humanity, oh, every humanity. Uh, uh, inherited uh, this evil heart, and we sin, and we become atoms, therefore we die. Okay. So I have my article in Korean, so unfortunately you may not be able to read it, so I didn't include it. Now, now, uh, now, uh, what time is it? Oh, 20. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now, uh, we have to explain, okay, we have to ex I have to explain uh, one more thing and then we will take a 10 minute break. Okay, so, so far uh, we have discussed uh, Adam's fall and sin and evil heart. Then what? So, you have an evil heart, I have an evil heart and we sin or we die. However, uh, the Jews in the second temple period they are expecting for what? God's salvation. God's salvation. God will intervene at some point uh, in the messianic era, and then He will do what? He will restore. He will restore uh, what was good uh, before the fall. Uh, again, Adam, when he was created, he was good. But what happened when he sinned? The first thing that he recognized after the fall was that he found himself naked. So therefore he covered himself with the uh, uh, plant leaves. Then you know, we can ask ourselves, you know, why did Adam uh, 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 find himself naked after the fall? Then what was he, uh, his condition like before the fall? Obviously Adam was not wearing any clothes before the fall, but instead he was clothed with glory. So it's a bright light. If you see God or angels, you, know, you will find them in glory and light. Obviously, uh, before the fall, Adam was clothed with the glory and light. When he sinned, uh, they left. So, Adam found himself naked. And now we are wearing clothes. Uh, then what will happen? Then what will happen? Uh, when God restores his righteous people, then what will happen? The righteous people will be clothed with glory and light. That's why the resurrected Jesus is clothed with light and glory, and we will be clothed with light and glory. Uh, there is a community called Kumnan. In Second Temple period, uh, they were living uh, near Dead Sea in uh, Palestine. So they built their own community, they lived uh, uh, together, uh, and they had their own uh, uh, books and their own Bible. Uh, they expected that this glory of Adam will be restored in the Messianic era. And they claimed that their community members, their community members will be expected to be clothed with a glory which originally belonged to Adam. In other words, you know, at some point, at some point, we will be. Oh, he's, their community will be, their community members will be restored to that glorious condition of Adam. And Baruch, Baruch uh, that I mentioned before, uh, he claimed that very, at the end of the world, a uh, very precious stone, a very precious stone will be given to the righteous ones of Israel. And that stone make uh, them uh, Shiny like Adam, shiny like Adam. So somehow glory, light, uh, a precious stone, you know, they were expected to be given to the Israelites uh, at the end. So again, Adam in Jewish anthropology, you know, they ex explain their current condition of tragedy in light of Adam's fall. And at the same time, when they are restored, you know, at the end of the uh, messianic era of human history, they'll be clothed with glory and the light that Adam used to uh, have.
Okay, so I guess this is our first lecture. In the second lecture, I will explain Adam and the law. Adam and the law, because uh, for the Jews, the law, the Moses law, was obviously the most precious gift from God. And I, I'll explain how the law helps them overcome the fall of Adam. Okay, folks, thank you. See you soon.